This is the Power Team America podcast, and today we're talking with John Burford, the head coach of the junior and sub-junior national teams. He also coaches Covington High School, one of the most dominant high school teams in the country. We talk about how to make the U.S. national teams for juniors and sub-juniors, current standings for those teams, and standout performances from high school nationals. But before we start, don't forget that Power Team America has two more national competitions coming up with University Nationals on April 15th and the grand finale, sub-junior, junior, masters, and equipped nationals starting June 2nd, which there's still time to register for that one if you haven't already. Thank you to SBD and Elenco for the continued partnership with Power of Team America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure to go to powerlifting America.com and make sure you follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Now, let's get to this interview with John Burford. We are here with John Burford, head coach of the U.S. national team for the juniors and sub juniors, and he's also the head coach of Covington Powerlifting. Welcome to the Power of Team America podcast, John. Hey, thank you. I'm super proud to be here. Uh, it's my first time on doing a podcast. I'm pretty excited about it. That's awesome. And we got Julia, um, part of our media team, a 63 kilo national competitor. Welcome, Julia. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So first things first, um, this episode, we're going to talk all things like juniors and sub juniors. Um, and as far as the U.S. national team is concerned, We'll talk about the meets, the qualifying criteria, all of that kind of stuff. And we'll get into some of the details of what happened at high school nationals, which was just last weekend. And so that's kind of the layout of like what we have planned for this episode. So first, before we get into too many details about stuff like that, I just wanted to get everyone to know John Burford, head coach of U.S. national team. Um, first thing is I picked up already on the Southern accent. Where are you located? <laughs> So I'm I'm from uh, Louisiana. Covington Covington is a city in Louisiana, South Louisiana. Uh, we're about 45 minutes north of New Orleans. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, you know I've been involved with powerlifting since I was in in high school. I was uh, uh, I lifted for three years in high school. I fell in love with the sport. I was actually uh, on the 2002 sub junior world team, the first first sub junior world team that the u.s sent i was on it wow uh, i'm not going to talk about my performance because I, I bombed <laughs> out but you know i bombed out on squat but it was it was a phenomenal experience and you know the rest is history wow that is awesome man you said 2002 or 2000? yeah 2002 yeah so just so people know i mean these are the kind of people that we have in power team america that are the head coach of these teams so especially the young kids out there like whenever you see these coaches these people have been in the game for, in, in your case, longer than a lot of the people on your team have even been alive, right? So yeah. um, this is the kind of experience level that they bring to the table um, whenever they're out here coaching you guys on these in the countries around the world and on these U.S. national teams. So definitely got to respect your elders, man. This guy's been in the game for longer <laughs> than all of us. Um, so you said you got involved in in high school and did, was it was it equipped and you said you bombed out so i'm assuming it was equipped <laughs> it, it was it was equipped you know in louisiana you know well i, I think everybody knows uh power thing was predominantly equipped kind of back in the day yeah. uh the raw has only been say past 10 years or so so yes i started out equipped mm -hmm. uh in in high school i continued uh in college i lifted at lsu uh equipped as well uh, and then got into coaching and, uh, I coach, uh, predominantly equipped just because, uh, that's what, uh, the Louisiana high school association is. We, our association is still equipped lifting, uh, and it's, it's, it's thriving down here in Louisiana. It's some great, great competitors. So it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. I mean, being, uh, the social media person that like follows all the lifters and stuff like that, you down in Covington have like a dynasty running. Um, you guys are killing it in, in equipped powerlifting, I'm sure in the state, but also, I mean, when we look at the U S national team last year that went over to Turkey, there were so many Covington lifters on the equip side of it. Um, so you're definitely doing a great, so you're the head coach of the Covington high school powerlifting team as well. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. I've been doing that since, uh, I guess 2009, I believe. Okay, wow. I, I kind of, I, I don't keep track of the years as much anymore. You know, they, they, they're adding up too quickly. <laughs> so you have a ton of experience coaching in this age group. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I never really intended on coaching. And then uh, I had a buddy who, who, was, who, went, to, who went to college to uh, become a coach and a teacher. And he, he asked me, 
they they asked him to coach the powerlifting team and he asked me to help him and uh you know so i did and i, I fell in love with coaching uh I turned out turned out to be pretty good at it so uh i'm still doing it to this day it's it's my biggest passion you know uh my my life revolves around the sport you know all my vacations are going to to a meet you know or to just something powerful in a meeting or whatever yeah yeah i mean we're out here doing this podcast on easter weekend yeah <laughs> much to our partners uh dismay i'm sure in life but uh, <laughs> but tell us a little bit about covington and just brag on it a little bit like how many national ch- titles do you guys got or, or what's the what's the framework for how high school power team works in louisiana i mean do you compete at the state level and then is there a national level so in Louisiana, we have our, our own sanctioned association. We're sanctioned by the High School Athletic Association. Uh, we're, we've actually been, the power thing in Louisiana has actually been the fastest growing sport in Louisiana for like the past seven years. Man, that's uh, awesome. You know, uh, our state meet, which was just a week before national, so that that presents its own unique challenges. But that our state meet, we had... 1050 competitors now we're we're broken up into uh five classifications 5a 4a 3a 2a 1a uh covington is in the the most populated division uh 5a and uh yeah we've done we've done well some uh state titles many many state champions uh we've been going to nationals since 2012 we've we've had a Mm -hmm. tremendous amount of success uh I think we've won six national titles, you know, uh, between boys, girls combined. Uh, and we've had, if I'm not mistaken, Covington has put more uh, lifters on the world team than any other high school in the, in the country, if I'm not mistaken. If, if not the top, we're definitely uh, top three. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's safe to say. I mean, the equip team last year was like 50% Covington uh, <laughs> or maybe more. Um, yeah. I remember doing staying up crazy late and watching it and clipping the live stream and posting like here's another Covington lifter and another Covington lifter. <laughs> yeah. And it's then a the same experience, man. That's a great experience. So I'm I'm super thrilled when I get when I get my kids on there and uh you know it kind of it spreads like wildfire once when you have kids that come back and they talk about their experience, you know, it just it motivates that that younger crew to to work that much harder to get there. For sure. I see that. Um, I saw that this, this year at high school nationals with some of the new kids and they would really look up to the older kids. You would see them hanging around them in the hotel and everything like that. And like, they want to be just like them. So I could tell yeah. see. and Julia, feel free to, you know, chime in if you have any questions for John on um, his background story or anything or anything else like that. Um, and then go ahead, Julia, did you have something? I don't know. I just, um, I was doing the captions for the um, high school nationals post for the Instagram account. And I just remember saying to Paul, I was like, well, like every other caption, at least, if not more, was Covington for the winners. So, yeah, they really have a good program. We brought 15 15 kids, you know, and it was uh, 15 pretty good ones, too. So, yeah. yeah. And that's not even your full squad, though, right? Because, like, Chandler wasn't there. Right. Yeah. And- uh, Chandler Chandler's actually from a different school. Chandler, uh, okay. Zach Montz, who was also on the, the sub junior team last year. Okay. They are from our our biggest rival, uh, oh. St. Paul's High School. We're our our two schools are less than a mile apart. Okay. You know, so uh I, I always tell people we're we're the, the strongest powerlifting region in the country for, for high school powerlifting. Yeah. You know? But uh, so yeah, we we compete against Chandler, you know, and oh, that's weird. I, I felt like I always saw him training with you guys. Well, he does, and you know, we you know we have a, a an awesome relationship with those guys. Obviously, we want to kick their ass, but uh, you know, they <laughs> it, it's great to you know no, wish them nothing but the best, man. Want them to be successful, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna compete. You know, that's that's what yeah. it's all about. Well, you guys are head-to-head competitors in Louisiana, but then your teammates when it comes to going around the world and representing the USA. Yeah. Um, So it's cool because, I mean, I, just as an outside observer, it seemed like you guys were on the same team and everything. Like that's how much the camaraderie is there. And 
you guys help him train going into worlds and stuff like that. So it's really cool. The community that you have, especially yeah. on the side, it's because you need that whole team of people to help. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's what power is all about. Right. I mean, just everybody, Hey, everybody wants to win, but you know, everybody, I mean, it's a, it's a community like no other. Absolutely. Um, so then let, tell us, you, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, powerlifting in Louisiana and it's all single ply. Is that right? And Correct, how yeah. big of a federation, like how many lifters are in the, the overall federation? Do you know? Uh, I believe it's about uh, 3,500 total. Okay. okay 3, you know, obviously it's high school. So, you know, yeah. every year you're having seniors graduate, you have a new freshman come in. Uh, mm -hmm. And like I said, we're, we've been the fastest growing sport in Louisiana high schools for the past like seven years. So uh, yeah. I'm on the, the executive committee for our high school association. And, you know, we're, we're having to figure out like, Hey, how do we, how do we handle all this growth? You know? Yeah. And it, it's, it's challenging, you know, which is, but it's a good problem to have. That is a good problem. I mean, and to think of like single ply that this is, you know, the fastest growing demographic in powerlifting are the sub juniors and the juniors. And to think that they're, a lot of them are coming out of Texas and Louisiana and I, in Wisconsin too, I think it has a lot of equipped single ply stuff. Is that right? Yeah. So Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin was very big, uh, with single ply. Uh, they, I guess maybe four or five years ago, uh, they started raw, you know, and, okay. and they, their association quickly kind of went predominantly raw, but they, they're, they're equipped as making a comeback, you know, a little bit, okay, but, yeah. uh, you know, Louisiana and Texas and, uh, Mississippi uh are all uh equipped solely equipped gotcha yeah you know so there's a lot of great lifters I know like for instance um before we started recording we, we were talking about Jessica Espinal she's a uh technically a junior still and put up obviously a, a crazy total at classic open nationals in Austin and I mean she comes from that background and if you look at some of the lifters like at Sheffield Michael Davis we talked about like he's a Texas high school lifter who came out of that single ply background and then transitioned over to raw and is now like on the biggest stage in the world. So it's a great training ground for powerlifting. And I think a big part of it is the community and the team aspect of it so that you have a lot of guidance around you. You're not just like lifting by yourself in a gym with headphones on. Yeah, correct. I mean, if you're going to do, if you're going to do equipped, uh, you know, you, you can't help, but have a good team around you if you're going to be successful. I mean, it's just, you know, there's just too much, involved with it uh but man it's 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 great for for high school kids i mean you know obviously all sports have you know kind of their lessons you know that you kind of take away from from adversity and and you know just other other things that that particular sport presents you know and that's kind of how equipped lifting is like it just it offers so many unique challenges and it's it's very good for uh for kids to have to experience that and have to kind of to work through it and process process the the challenges and the setbacks and yeah. just the frustrations man like when you're when you're learning equipment it sucks you know like you have to like really deal with the suck for say two months and then once you start kind of figuring it out and seeing it seeing some of the improvements then it really kind of gets addictive you know but it's 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 certainly challenging yeah, that's great. And I mean, it's like in, like you said, like the, the team aspect of it, you're going through it with your classmates that are the same age as you and stuff. And there's a, there's an older student that's hand, handing down their bench shirt, you know, yeah. and just things like that, where it's like, you don't really have that on the raw side. Um, it can be so much more individualized, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the raw has been great because, uh, you know, it, it's such a great sport and the raw has allowed, uh, I don't want to say an easier entry, but, but, but an easier entry into the sport, you know, you know, you can just, Hey, you get a belt and you can go to the gym and you can power lift, you know? Yeah. So that, that's been great for the sport. Uh, you know, the sport obviously has seen an explosion and, and growth the past uh, number of years. So it's, man, it's, it's, it's all good. There's, there's mm -hmm. room for, for both sides, obviously, you know, uh, I, I'm just, I'm super excited about, you know, going forward. I mean, just the, the talent 
also that you see at these meets like every year it's just it's getting better and better i mean it's it's just it's insane no it's really it's really exciting julia did you have something um yeah so i just wanted to ask um about how um lifters get used to gear a little bit and and um stuff like that because I went to the Arnold and I actually had the opportunity to talk to Jimmy Kolb, who has, you know, the 13 something pound, 1300 pound bench press or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, the fit of um, the equipment makes a lot of difference. Um, so I was kind of wondering, can you explain a little bit about how um, a lifter would choose the equipment and, um, how they can kind of get into that if they're interested and um, yeah so you know the the biggest thing uh i think the biggest misconception about gear is that you throw on a bench shirt and you're you're automatically doing 50 pounds more or you throw on a squat suit and you're you're doing however many pounds more and it's just not the case you know it really takes some work uh you know a lot of times you'll you can throw uh throw some gear on and your numbers will actually go down from what you're doing raw. And that that can be the frustrating part because it it really takes some 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 time to to get used to it, uh, you know, get over the 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 suckiness of it uh before you start really seeing kind of the benefits of it. Uh, you know, and I think the biggest thing that's hurting uh geared lifting right now is there's just not enough good coaches that know gear, you know, and you know that can kind of communicate, Hey, it's going to suck for a little while, you know, but you gotta, you gotta persevere and kind of stick through it. If you really want to see what gear is about, you know? So I think if, you know, if we can get some more, uh, good coaches with gear, uh, uh, available to people, I think that would help. But, uh, you know, if for those interested in gear, man, you just gotta, you gotta find a good knowledgeable coach that knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, cause it's, it's certainly not something where you can just you can just throw it on and you're magically, you know, a hundred pounds stronger. It's just it's just not reality, you know. And now I think with the expensiveness, uh, you know, a lot of lifters are trying out all kinds of different knee, raw lifters trying out different knee sleeves and belts and the price of even just singlets and stuff. I don't really think it's just the cost of the gear. That's it's like you said, it's the personnel. It's like you lose that unless you have people around you. That's what we have a big shortage of. Um, yeah. That's so valuable. If you, if you have someone like John around in your, in your region, then definitely you got to go in and try it out. And everyone who's involved with equipped lifting are so helpful. I mean, they want to teach and they want to hand down this knowledge and information to the next generation. And you're doing a good job there and coming to producing these young leaders that are going out into the community now and going off, you know, to universities and lifting at like a lot of your lifters are going to Ottawa now and some of these other yeah. uh, universities where they'll then, you know, become leaders in the sport and pass that knowledge on down to the next generation. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about gear is uh, you'll actually see a lot of masters lifters competing gear. Uh, and that's simply for the fact that, uh, you know, as you get older, kind of your, your bones start creaking a little bit more, kind of you put that tight suit on and, you know, it actually, you know, it allows you to keep training, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the, the suits actually started as kind of a, a safety thing, you know, and then they kind of started realizing, hey, this is tight and kind of it's, it's helping me do more and it kind of morphed a little bit, yeah. you know, uh, but it, it really, you know, protects, you know, some hips and uh, some shoulders and stuff like that. So there's a lot of a benefit to uh, uh, helping longevity, too. Yeah, I think um, I was listening to a podcast with Ian Bell, and he was saying that he basically can't, can't squat raw. Like his he's been you know, in the game for so long that his his he I think he said he had torn labrums in his hips and basically but he can squat like a crazy amount in gear and yeah. it, it protects your hips and things like this. So that's a great, great point with the gear stuff. Like, and it's definitely not going anywhere. It's still here. It's here to stay and everything. And we definitely at power in America want to try to support it and make it really cool. Like I, like the first time I met you guys, uh, you and Jeff Douglas and everyone down in Orlando last year and like Zen and, 
and everyone was hanging out after the day of equip lifting it was the third day of of that nationals and i mean it's the most fun crew in powerlifting like we had a blast like hanging out all night long afterwards and everything i was like god we got to bottle this energy and put it out there so that people uh, will see how fun and exciting it is and see the camaraderie and uh, make it cool, you know, so that people will want to do it. You know, as a coach, uh, one of the the biggest draws for me for the equip side is you're just, you're just more involved, you know, cause I, you know, I wrap, I wrap the knees and, you know, I'm, I'm helping my kids get their shirts on and making adjustments to the shirt. So you're just kind of more involved. And yeah. as you, you saw at high school nationals, I mean, there's yeah. a, there's a timing with everything with wrapping knees and just getting everybody ready to go to, you know, to make sure they're, they're out there for when the bar is loaded. You know, it's just, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. And That's, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, the, the other thing is just kind of, it adds some variables when the, the competition can be, it can make the competition really fun, you know, cause it, if you're behind, you know, there's, you can just kind of work that shirt a little bit more and, Hey, whereas you might have only done 150, you know, maybe, hey, we're going to do something to the shirt and try to, we're going to try to push it and get 155 or something. So, you know, just the equipment just offers us some, some more nuances to the sport that, that really draws me into it. I could see from a coaching standpoint, like you feel like you're making more of a difference in the day of the athlete, like, like you have a bigger role yeah. to play. Um, because every little thing that you're doing from like how tight you're wrapping the knees to when you're wrapping them, um, so that they're not standing there for like two or three minutes with the circulation yeah. getting cut off to their legs with these wraps on and stuff like this. Um, you're making a bigger difference than uh, oftentimes a raw coach is just putting in the numbers and then just trying to get mentally get them right. And then just the timing is still there a little bit with the last warm ups and things like that. But once yeah. you just kind of rolling, it, you know, it's like you, you're a little more hands off as a, as a raw coach. And like, like you said, like someone could miss a lift and then yeah, a raw coach could give them like a little technique change or something. And then they go out and, and make it, but you can really add a lot of kilos to the total by uh, making an adjustment on how you're wrapping or how your the yeah. shirt is fitting or whatever the case may be. I don't even know all the details. It's so fun. That's why I find it so fun to, to be in the warm up room during equipped stuff, because it's like, everything is weird and different and like exciting. Like there's always something going on and someone's always fiddling around with something or other, you know? So yeah. It's, it's exciting. You know, both, both raw and equipped are, are, are awesome. And yeah. uh, I think, I think that kind of would the, the problem that I think a lot of people make is, is consider is they kind of look at both as being the same and, you know, besides just the squat bench press and deadlift, that's kind of where the similarities end. You know, yeah. I think if people, really looked at it as hey this is raw this is equipped they're really just separate kind of separate uh i don't want to say sports entirely but you know they're they're not that similar you know yeah. uh but you know raw raw is great equipped is great you know it's it's just man oh. I, I love this sport this is just it's great it's a great sport. Exactly. And, and I think for people like, you know, if you've been doing raw for a long time and you've never heard about this equip kind of thing, it's an intriguing, it's a curiosity, like, like for, for me, especially like, is mostly being focused on raw in the past. And then, like I said, that, that meet in Orlando was my first real experience with equipped in person and just seeing so much of the stuff behind the, behind the scenes. Um, it just was so very, really, really exciting. And I think same could be said for the other way around, you know, like if you've been mostly involved in equip stuff and you've always done equip meets, try a raw meet sometime and see how it goes, you know, and, and, uh, if you're a raw lifter, try find yourself a crew and get into some equipment and see how it goes. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of, a lot of, uh, coaches who will incorporate, even for a raw lifter, they'll incorporate some, some, some geared stuff, just because uh you know it's a matter of like overload and stuff like that so there's there's benefits there too for sure for sure and i mean i think um like i mentioned you in in uh, scranton one of the things i noticed really about the covington team i was because because i'm out there filming everything and doing so i'm always like kind of in the mix and um i noticed like i always knew where the covington lifters were like i never had to guess like so if i saw three four out the lifter that i'm focused on covering I, I would always know exactly where they'd be. I knew that you guys would be basically walking them up to that staging area, like as the bar is loaded. And they, as soon as they get to that chalk ball, basically you're going to hear bar is loaded, you know, and they're not going to wait a second with those wraps on longer than they have yeah. to. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So, I mean, it's very interesting. And I mean, not every team was was like that. They all, you know, tried and, and did good and stuff like that. But it was, you know, it was definitely there was like a level of professionalism there with the Covington lifters where it was like clockwork, you know. And then, of course, if there was a miss load or something like you and they had to wait anyway, it's like, damn, we did all this work to avoid <laughs> that. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> but, you know, that, that kind of goes with it. You just got to you got to roll with the punches. But, uh, you know, that's. I guess that's just from years and years of doing it that you just kind of perfect that timing. And, uh, you know, as, as kids are coming up through the program, they, you know, they, they realize how important it is, you know, to be kind of, Hey, you want to be exactly one time. You don't want to be too soon. You don't want to be too late, you know, yeah. and it, little, little things like that can make a big difference at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it adds up across the whole team. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, um, Julie, did you have something? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I just on um, on the timing thing. I've um, competed uh, and in USPA and WRPF before, and um, sometimes the timing is a real big issue. Like you see people actually time out um, because they can't get their knees wrapped or or something like that. Um, and to be able to manage uh, multiple lifters in the same flight. Um, or a whole team is it's it's a really challenging thing I mean just one lifter one one coach and one lifter um, it's hard to get that timing so that's a really really underestimated um, aspect of coaching equipped lifting for sure yeah for sure and you know uh, you know really it, I'm I guess I'm the head guy for for Covington but you know I've got I've got a great staff that you know I couldn't you know, they, they make me look good. So, uh, you know, well, it, it takes a team. And it's that leadership though, too. Like, it's like a super, it's like, you're kind of like the manager of a team as well. Like the other coaches and picking the, the right warm up platforms and the, you know, securing the chairs to in the right place so you can wrap them and get them as close as possible. And there's just so yeah. much that goes into it. It's really exciting. I think um, it's if for people who don't know about equipped, it's definitely like, there's a lot that goes into it. There's all these little extra elements of strategy. And if you're a super nerd about powerlifting, like we are, it's exciting. Cause then there's all these little other things that you can like debate about, you know, and, yeah, exactly. and have sports, exactly. sports talk around. Yeah. One of my favorites is actually um, people coming out for their first bench and not wearing a bench shirt. And then they put on a bench <laughs> shirt for their second um, bench and then their bench is like a hundred pounds higher, you know, cause they know how to use the shirt really well. Um, yeah. You know, I'm guilty. Be. I'm guilty of that one. Pull, pulling, pulling that move a couple times. <laughs> but, That's what's so interesting about it. There's all this. There's all these strategies, and like, if you're competing head to head with someone like at World Games or something at the highest level where it's single ply, um, and you have to know these tendencies of your opponents because if you just look at their openers, they may be projecting a certain total. But if you know that 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 bench that's listed on there is actually a raw bench, and then they're going to put a shirt on, then they're going to put an even tighter shirt on. Yep. So is this, it makes her for like that, those layers um, that I think you don't have as many layers in raw lifting. Yeah. Yeah. Just an extra kind of cerebral element to it. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Cool. All right. Well, we don't want to go too deep on uh, this. Isn't the equipped lifting uh, podcast or whatever yeah. for today, but we want to talk about what we got John here um, about the U S national teams for sub juniors and juniors. Cause you're the head coach. And so First, before we go, you know, we'll, we'll talk about high school nationals. We'll talk about the 2023, like the qualifying criteria and that kind of thing. But first, just give us a little bit of a lowdown on what it is to be the head coach of the U.S. national teams for uh, juniors and sub juniors, because it's a really big team. You know, you have a couple age groups, you got extra weight classes. Um, and then and then let's talk a little bit about Turkey in 2022 and just like how hard it was to manage this such a huge team. Yeah, so uh, obviously we're doing sub juniors, juniors, classic, and equipped. Uh, so that's four uh, teams, men, men and women. So that's eight teams. Eight teams with potentially uh, with nine nine weight classes. So the, each team could be a max of nine. So you're potentially we're looking at a team of seventy two lifters going to two worlds. Uh, okay. With sub juniors and juniors. Uh, both on the men and women's side, the men's side, you have the 53 kilo class uh, for sub juniors and juniors. And then on the women's side, you have the, the 43 kilo class for uh, 
sub juniors and juniors. Uh, and then once you get to open, those classes drop off. So that's why open and masters are only have eight way classes. Uh, okay. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot, you know, and you're dealing with, with sub juniors and juniors. So sub juniors is, is basically your high school age kids. Juniors is basically college age kids. Okay. Uh, kind of the unique thing about sub juniors is a lot of them don't realize like how good they are and they don't necessarily realize that oh i i can go compete at worlds until yeah. until i give them an email or, or a call hey you know would you like to be on the u.s national team and they're you know they're just wide-eyed and kind of dumbfounded like because they never realized it was a possibility yeah you know that's so that's one thing that's so cool about this age group is like they're so like unassuming and like you know, it, it's so exciting. They make such progress from year to year. And even from, you know, two or three months from when they're nominated to when they actually show up at Worlds, they could have added to their totals and stuff like this. But so tell us a little bit about how it went in Turkey in 2022. Um, and how many do you know off the top of your head, like how many people there were and just like, what are all the things because I know, like, you coordinate so sub juniors are 18 year olds, basically, and younger, and then uh, juniors 14, are 14 to 18. And then uh, juniors are 19 to 23. Uh, right. But it goes by birth year. So, uh, you know, it's just the what classifies you as a sub junior or junior can get a little confusing. But uh, but basically it's 14 to 18 for sub juniors and 19 to 23 for juniors. Uh, you know, but man, Turkey, I mean, it's so the equip portion was the the first part of the week, uh, the first four or five days and then the classic portion was the second five or six days uh so what we did you know we we worked through a travel agent and uh basically we had uh like four team flights and we had a, a coach on basically each one of the team flights uh two of them going in for the equipped and then two of them going in for the the classic a couple of days later you know, because it's really just not feasible for the whole team to go the whole time. Yeah. I was there as the head coach. Uh, I was gone total of 12 days. Yeah. And and this year, they're actually, they're adding two days to it. So I'm going to be gone two weeks uh, for uh, this, the world championships this year. So, and then, so and, you know, going traveling, you know, we went to Turkey, to Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, you know, it's a uh, 13 hour flight uh you know the the food is different you know uh, the beds the beds are different you know that's that's a big thing that you know a lot of people just don't realize you're going to go to uh an eastern european country and you know you're thinking oh they they said uh king bed you know but it, it's it's not the, it's not a king bed that you're thinking of you know <laughs> it's, you know, it's not, not not quite as comfortable you know yeah, I remember. And then, and then the food is different. Heavies. Yeah, super heavy. We're having trouble with the beds and stuff. What, what, what would you say? The food is different. Yeah, the food. The food's a big, big different. Uh, big difference. Uh, when we were there, man, it was it was a big culture shock for uh, a lot of the kids on the team. You know, they it was just different different flavors, especially us from South Louisiana. You know, we're the we spice everything up like to the max and you know we go to turkey and i mean it's just it was it was different it was, i'll say that it was different yeah and then there's probably someone from a different part of the u.s who thought everything there was like crazy spicy you know yeah, yeah like yeah. so so it's interesting i mean you're dealing with and then that age demographic too is not always the most open-minded about you know trying new foods and things like that you know and stuff yeah. so it's like very interesting, like this is a difficult gig for you to have to handle all these different personalities. Yeah. I mean, we had uh some some sub juniors on the team that I mean were basically eating fries like every night, you know, and not not much food with any real substance to it, you know. And that's something I, I've got to take into account, you know, when they're when they're warming up and I'm trying to explain, hey, why did that look a little slow, you know? And I, okay, well, this person hasn't eaten great 
you know, in these three days leading up to the meet, you know, you know, yeah. they're trying to keep their weight up or, or whatnot. Uh, you know, and you're just trying to explain all that and then make adjustments. So they still have a, a good meet. Yeah. And then like on the equip side of it, it adds in that extra wrinkle of like, you lose a couple of pounds. Now the shirt's a little loose or the squat suit's yep. a little. Loose. Exactly. So, exactly. And then, you know, we get over there in a lot of Eastern European countries, uh, you know, they don't have air conditioning like we're used to in the States. So, uh, you know, that, that plays a big, a big difference when you're warming up as you know, everybody knows, yeah. uh, you know, so the warm up room was hot. So, I mean, there's just, just traveling the world, man. It's just, it's different, you know, until you, until you do, uh, until you go to, on one of these meets, uh, you just, you don't, I don't think people can quite grasp like, you know, what it is to actually compete internationally. You know, there's so many little factors that, you know, just outside of us. I mean, your training can go great, but Hey, that the food's different. The bed's different. The, uh, the warm up room is hot. I mean, it's all these like yeah. kind of hidden, hidden variables that is, is what's really hard to plan for. And I think, you know, especially in this age group, it's like, it's such a good life experience for them, you know, like to go through adversity, to see different cultures, to appreciate the things that you have, like air conditioning and your bed that you're sleeping in every night and like the ability to get the kind of food you want super easy and convenient in the U.S. Yeah. All those little things that we take for granted oftentimes when you go to an um, um, event like that, it gives you a greater appreciation. And like, that's a great for that age group in particular young kids would be getting those experiences so early on in life 72 of them you know potentially that's yeah. that's fantastic i mean you're really doing god's work out there doing that kind of stuff man for <laughs> sure <laughs> it's I, tough I, enjoy it. I enjoy it so it, it's 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 great for me i'm i get a yeah. kick out of it i love doing it totally um and i mean definitely seeing high school nationals like definitely um it was very inspiring to see these young kids out here putting up these numbers and just the hard work and just thinking wow the future is so bright for powerlifting in america um so let's talk a little bit now about the us national teams for 2023 um the ipf world's team is going to romania and then the north american regional team is going to the cayman islands so briefly if you want to just kind of give us What's a qualifying criteria? How does someone get onto one of these national teams? So, so first off, with the with the qualifying criteria, uh, you know, it's changed over the years. Uh, you know, there's been different. The raw team has had different uh, uh, different process. The equipped team has had a different process. And what we try to do is, you know, we're really trying to go through it, try to make it simple, but also get the best team, but also get kind of the most deserving lifters, you know, and trying to combine all that is difficult. But the, so the process for this year, the, the automatic selection. So there's three meets, you have high school nationals, university nationals, and then uh, classic age division equipped, uh, equipped uh, nationals in Arizona. Yeah. Basically we put all those together and then, we take all the sub juniors, put them by weight class, all the juniors, put them by weight class. And then, so if you're the best one in your weight class in like, say the sub juniors, you're the best one. And then you're also the top nine sub junior by points, you're automatic. Okay. Uh, if, and if you don't, if you don't fall into the automatic selection, then everyone else goes into the secondary selection, which is strictly based off Carpino, which Carpino is basically, we plug your total into the past three years and it kind of tells you how, how you would do on average. Mm -hmm. So a lower number on a Carpino score means that you would have placed, you know, like if you have a Carpino score of one, that means over the last three years, that total on average, you would have finished in first place. Yeah, you would have finished in first place every year. If, so, if you have a Carpino of 1.33, that means you would have finished uh, first, first, and second. Exactly. You know, uh, or say a Carpino of two, you would have finished a second, second, second. Yeah. You know, or any kind of average. Or one, two, three. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's an average placing basically relative to your weight class at Worlds the previous three years. So like the yeah. benefit of it is that it makes it so that 
if you do have a really good Carpino score, that means you're going to be very competitive in your weight class when you go to Worlds. Yeah. Which can be affected by factors like, is there some superstar in your weight class from another country that's pushed that total up and made it yeah. really hard so that if we send lifters in that weight class, it's going to be hard to place? Or is it a super easy weight class where we could get, you know, gold, silver, and bronze medals uh, for Team USA, something like yeah. that? So it takes into yeah. account the, all of those factors. Yeah. And, you know, every year we're going to kind of, we're going to evaluate it after after the championships and, you know, see if, hey, did did kind of a deserving kid not make it or, you know, was there a flaw in the process? Because, you know, ultimately we want to do, we want to do right by the lifters, uh, right by uh, the U.S. team, right by Power Out in America, you know, so we're, we're going to constantly be looking at and trying to make it the best we can. Totally. So yeah, I think you guys did a good job with it this year. It's difficult because it's from three different meets, you know, and, and so it's like, it's kind of, you had to come up with a system that could work across all three meets and everything like that. Yeah. So seems like a, a, a really good system. And then tell us about how the NAPF team then is selected. So once we have the, the top nine uh, for the world team, uh, the NAPF team is going to be basically the next highest, the next nine highest by points. Okay. And that, that's going to, that's going to be those who go to NAPF and in, in the Cayman islands. Awesome. So cool. All right. Well, let's get into some details then. So, um, we can talk about um, kind of like where let's let's go into where the standings are currently. This is after high school nationals and after classic nationals, because some the classic any power team America national level meet, I believe you could make it on the team as an alternate. Is that right? That's correct. So so the three primary selection meets are high school nationals, university nationals and then nationals in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do. If if anyone who did classic na classic open nationals, they're also eligible, but they're not eligible for the automatic spot. So they're they're automatically put into the uh the into the secondary selection based on Carpino. And we had we've had five kids, uh uh it was I think three three juniors and uh two sub juniors that lifted at classic open. So That's they're they're eligible for uh the secondary selection. That's really cool to see those young kids out there on like the biggest platform um, in powerlifting America, you know, with like some of the superstar lifters. So go ahead and um, share your screen with us and we'll go through each team and kind of run through the standings. And for people that are just listening that you can't see what he's going through, we'll kind of talk through it as well. And then in the next couple of days, uh, probably like maybe by, by Monday evening, we'll post this information onto the national teams page which we've mentioned before on the podcast that if you go to powerlifting america.com and you click on the athletes tab, and then from there, the national teams tab, you can then click on each individual team. So like the classic and sub juniors, uh, ju juniors and sub junior team, you can click on that. And then you can see all this qualifying criteria spelled out on there. And then we will also put up some screenshots from this uh, spreadsheet that John's going to share with us here, or you can go watch it on YouTube and you can just, you know, see it as we go through. Okay. So, okay. Yep. Y'all seeing the screen now? Yeah, we're getting it. Yeah. So this is the the female classic sub juniors that we're starting with. Okay. And and over here on the left is the the top nine for the the world championships. And then this the list on the right is the the next nine for the North American championships. Uh, now you can see already. I mean this this world team is just is stacked. I mean. We're going to start off with with Jessica Haggerty and Elaine Guerrera, uh, and then Eva Polini, and then towards the bottom, you know, Luella Bowden and uh, Chelsea uh, Andamore. Uh, so I mean, I, man, I'm it's I'm super excited about this team already, and yeah, so we, we still have two meets left. So yeah, like let's just run through it real quick. So in the 52s, we got Jessica Haggerty, and she's got is that a 1.3 Carpino? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then we got Eleni Guerrera. Uh, she's got a 1.3. She's a 57. We got Eva Polini in the 63s. She did equipped and she did raw one day. And then the next day did equipped at high school nationals. So in, a, in a week, a week before she did equip state. <laughs> so, so, you know, this total that's in here, she's definitely capable of more than this. If she was like really pushing to go all out. 
Um, yeah. She's a 63. <clears throat> in the 69s, we got Ava Lawless and Geneva Reese. 76s, we got Christina Peters, Amelia Gherkin, and then Luella and Chelsea are the 84 pluses. Um, and everyone knows Luella because she came to Classic Open Nationals in Austin. Um, <clears throat> she's a high-ranking alternate on the Open Classic team. And yeah. uh, she's she's definitely high ranking here. So Luella would have finished with a one Carpino. So that means she would have won worlds the last three years. And then Chelsea's right on her heels there with a 1.3. So that is a stacked team already. Like you said, we still got two more meets to go to fill out this team even more. <clears throat> and then on the North American team. So we basically have these as the, uh, the runner ups, the next nine, uh, we got Lila Stecker. We got Emma Klein, Kaylee Navis, Emily Nees, Catherine Costanzo, uh, Teresa Olive, Haley Tackman, Lily Fintak, and Kaylee Mann. <clears throat> Daughter of Steve Mann, the legendary Superman. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to clarify, also, you know, yeah. just so everybody understands, uh, we're only allowed to take two in a weight class. So sometimes there, there might have been uh, where a third person uh, – you know, maybe should have made this team, but we're all, we're limited to two per weight class. So that, that does throw some wrinkles in there a little bit. Yeah, for sure. All right. So that's the uh, current standings there uh, for the classic sub junior worlds and uh, North American championships team. Let's go. What do you guys want to do next? You want to do stay with sub juniors or, or you want to go to equipped or let's go to junior. I'm sorry. Let's, let's just click over to junior, keep it raw. And then we'll go to the equipped. So this is the juniors, uh, you know, and obviously the kind of the big thing here is, you know, you don't see a full NAPF team yet, but, you know, you need to realize we, we've only had high school nationals, which is mostly sub juniors. And then we've had a, a couple lifters make the team from classic open. So, you know, after university nationals, we're, we're expecting this list to, to change quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the final say will be at age group nationals then in Scottsdale yeah. in June. Um, so we, we're just real quick. We'll, we'll give, we'll just run down these. So for people that are just listening, um, we know we got Jessica Espinal at the top of this list in the 47s. We got Ayana Rivera in the 47s. We got uh, Elizabeth Pizarro as a 57, Chloe Levesser as a 63. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your names. Uh, Carolyn Connor in the 69s, um, who came out and listed, lifted with us in Classic Open Nationals. Jessica Ferris as 76. Elise Paw um, as an 84. And then Jenna Stifler and Haley Macasio bell as 84 pluses. That's the U.S. Uh, ch that's the World Championship team as it stands. And the, again, this junior team, we're going to see it fluctuate quite a bit after University Nationals and after Junior Nationals in Scottsdale. Um, and then on the North American Championship team, we got Bella Sicca. Lindsay James, Gretchen Reese, and Emily Webster's. Um, so those are basically like the first alternates for the world championship team as well. So, yeah. You know, so and I'm sure everybody knows uh, Jessica Espinal is on the open team, you know. Yeah. So I would love if she comes to uh, Romania with us, but, you know, I, yeah. I guess I can't blame her if she doesn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. You um, know, keep, keeps, keeps her mind set on the open. That's, I guess I can't, can't blame her. And it's like roughly, I want to say it's like a month or so um, away, or maybe it's a month and a half. Like, I don't know. She might have a, she might be able to squeeze a six week prep in there and, and do it. Who knows? We'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. And then let's go to the uh, sub junior equipped. Okay. This is a really nice spreadsheet, by the way, which you can tell to be <laughs> on this. <laughs> the coach of this team is an organizational nightmare. So I can see how you've made this like really nice with buttons to sort and everything. Really <laughs> nice. Appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. You want to mention these? Anyone on this list? Yeah. So, you know, uh, the equip side, 47s, you got Camille Crutcher, Isabel Casagneta. 57s, uh, Brooklyn Mazuka, Lila Cooper, 63, Eva Polini. Again, that's the that's the one we just mentioned who lifted raw and then equipped. Uh, she's in line to make both teams, which is man, that's 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 amazing. Like, I mean, just to, to be to be so good at at, at both, you know, because it's it's such a rare thing. Uh 84, Mackenzie Wells, Bailey Fields. Uh, and then 84 plus Michaela Forsyth and Avery Dunlap. 
that's and a then, team already again. And uh, yeah. like a couple of lifters in there to mention, like we talked to Eva, um, Camille too. I mean, uh, all these lifters here are like around three on the Carpino or less, which is really yeah. good. And I think you, Camille is one of your lifters. I saw like, she faced a lot of adversity at high school nationals where on her opening bench, I believe, or one of her benches, she kind of dropped it back on her face and was bruised from that. And she dumped a bar over her head, I think on squat. Yeah. And yeah. she still persevered and, and finished. And she's sitting on the uh, high on the rankings here for on the U S national team for going to worlds. Yeah. She's a tough kid. You know, like I said, we, she also competed at her state meet equipped and then turned around a week later trying to compete at nationals and put up a good, a good showing battle some adversity. You know, I thought she handled it great. You know, hopefully, hopefully she can uh, make this team after the, the next two qualifying meets. Yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to move on to the North American. Uh, real quick. I just mentioned the Brooklyn Mazuka and Lila Cooper battle. That was a battle. That was a hell of a battle. Came down to the final deadlift, did it not? It it did. And we, I was, <laughs> we, Lila, Lila is my girl. And that was, uh, so we were on the, the losing end, but man, she, she had a good meet. She put up a, uh, you know, she put up kind of the best, the best number she could that day. And uh, Brooklyn and her coach, Brian uh, Shekels, man, they, they, they just, they put the number on the bar, man. And she, she got pumped up and man, she went out and ripped it off the floor. And, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. And in hindsight, cause, cause I was really following Lila very cl closely on this. And I, I don't know if it was off nominations. It didn't seem like Brooklyn was that close. And, um, but when you look at her, it should be obvious that she's got a big deadlift. Like that's the thing. It's like, I should have seen that coming that she could possibly pull in for the win as a surprise uh, because she looks like a deadlifter, you know? Yeah. And, you know, so, Brian's a phenomenal coach, you know, for, for anybody who's heard of Taylor LaChapelle, uh -huh. it's her coach. World games, uh, silver medalist this year. Yeah. Awesome yeah. lifter. Okay. And cool. she, she started Taylor, Taylor LaChapelle started on this sub junior team. I think she, she made it. I think the team all five, all five years that she was eligible or at least four but i mean brian's a phenomenal coach you know so that was, it was, that was a fun battle yeah um i it's a fun battle that i didn't really realize was happening until the <laughs> very end um but uh i hope that maybe both of those lifters will go to uh equip nationals in in scottsdale and maybe we'll see them run that run that battle back again yeah yeah for sure so, yeah, then go ahead and we can talk about the North American Championships team. And the North American in the 57s, we have Abby Callie and Kaylee Kepke, uh, 63, Brooklyn Stroik and Naomi Lucas, 69, Celeste Godinez and Elizabeth Kroll, 76, Callie Cephalou and Emily Mose, and then 84, Jenna Austin. All right. Yeah. There's some names I definitely recognize in there. Um, if you're following our Instagram, we got a, a reel out there on Cali. And um, I know Celeste Godina is like had a, a great meet as well. You can see these numbers are super close here. So there's like some battles in here that was fun, fun ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then to the juniors uh, again, you know, it's high school national. So it's predominantly. Uh, oops, shoot. Yeah, you're there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Predominantly sub juniors at this meet. So we've only had uh, uh, three juniors so far for equipped. Uh, 47 is, is Lois Sheremy, who's, she's a defending world champ uh, moving up from the sub juniors uh, and Aaron Anderson in the 69s who she went to the North American championships last year and did well. I think now she's a North American champ. Yeah, so now she's uh, going up to juniors and hoping to make the world team. And then uh, Leslie Man Lemansic, uh in the eighty-four plus. So, and right. you know, we're gonna see we're gonna see this number this list change quite a bit once we get to university in uh, in Arizona as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Lola, I think was like a four medalist. Uh, I think she won, brought back either uh, like three or four gold medals um, last year at Worlds, and one of the stars. Like I think she might have been in the running for best lifter. Maybe she was best lifter. No, she didn't. She didn't win best lifter. She was uh, she was up there. Uh, but you know, her first her first international uh, 
competition. I thought she did. She did well. Uh, she tried to bomb out on deadlift, but uh, she got <laughs> she got together. She she missed her first two deadlifts and uh, just just wasn't quite uh, standing erect, you know. Which is, uh, you know, we all know what kind of calls those are. But uh, yeah. you know, she just needed to get back a little bit more. She she made the adjustment and uh, she was able to secure the win. So it's good experience for her. world champion, reigning world champion. Um, who did win best lifter in that? Was it, it's one of your lifters. Was it Haley or was it? Uh, no. Haley? So at, uh, that was, uh, who was it? I think it was the. It's okay. We'll... Yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting if I'm, I'd be lying to you if I told you. Yeah. Yeah. But I know you guys had a lot of lifters you know, that, that you coach or it's obviously from the U S team and that sub junior equipped class yeah. on the women's side that they pretty much ran the table over there. Yeah. That was, that was a fun team. All right. So now let's go ahead and jump over to the two. We did all the women. Yep. All right. So let's jump over and go to the male, the, uh, classic sub juniors. All right. Um, so I'll run through these ones. Um, so we got on current standings here on the world championships team in the 53s. We got Gavin Mag and Derek Lee, 59s, James Castillo, Castillo, uh, 66, Matthew Nyan, 83, Marcus McFadden, 93, Brock Nye, and 105, James Kellerman and Cole Sherg both made it. They had a nice, nice fun time out there on the platform. And then in the 120s, we got Trevor Klein. So <clears throat> Some up and coming stars in here for sure. I think Trevor Klein like put on a show. You can see like he's got a really a good Carpino there of two point three. Marcus McFadden. Um, people who are listening to this podcast will know he's on the Power of the America media team. So we were super pumped to see him show out with that one point six Carpino score, looking like he could be a strong favorite to win worlds. And then of course you know just a bunch of great performances out there from from high school nationals and then on the north american championships team we got tyler reed fugner we got william goodman vincent latoski keegan bucci salvatore capria danny hashampour cole iverson christian rodriguez and russell clark so those are kind of like the next alternates if anyone that gets invited to the u.s to the world championship team turns down these will be the ones that you go to first to uh, fill those spots yeah and if they don't end up going to Worlds, they get to go to Cayman Islands and compete in North America regionals, uh, which yeah. is an awesome experience in and of itself. You know, and a lot of things with these sub juniors, man, you know, kind of everybody starts as a sub junior, right? So this is where a lot of people kind of get their get their feet wet, man. Like, yeah, you know, this is kind of cliche, but this is where some of your your future stars are coming from is is these meets. So that's that's pretty cool to be to be uh, part of it at, at, at this stage. And I mean, to get international experience as a sub junior is just amazing. It's going to set you up really well, you know, as you move up through the ranks into the juniors and the opens. And by the time you get to like a Sheffield stage, you know, um, then you, you the the big lights and the strict referees and the and the travel and all that stuff is not going to affect you you know, because yeah. you'll have practice and don't go on through it at these levels of like North American regionals and ju sub junior world, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm excited, man. Uh, this, the, some of these lifters like, like uh, Trevor, like, man, he, he really put on a huge show out there. Um, there's some fighters in here too, like James Castillo, Castillo, you know, came down to a final deadlift in his weight class. Um, so it's, it's exciting. I'm pumped for this. Yeah. James yeah, Kellerman yeah. is, is a, is a beast. So, yeah. All right. Let's uh, click on over to the juniors. We have, how many do we got in here? Oh, got ourselves damn near a whole team. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll let you take these. So in the 59s, we have uh, Freddie Vizcaya Garcia, 66, Caden Swinson, uh, 83, Alex Seidor, uh, 93, Sarkis Bukali. Yeah. Uh, he was he was the best lifter at high school nationals for uh, for for raw. Uh, he's an impressive lifter. Uh, Kenneth Jackson, Michael Vasquez, Henry Cop, Damian Zuniga, and Braden Pierce. Mm -hmm. And then okay. uh, are yep. those 
are those the Carpino scores? Yeah. Accurate. Okay. Now, now keep in mind, you know, juniors classic is super competitive and all these kids are young enough to be in high school. Yeah. So this you is know, on the you know, side of the juniors. They yeah. So they're, they're on the wrong side, you know, you know, and you know, some of these Carpino scores might look high, but man, like, yeah. you know, that's, it's, it's ultra competitive and these guys are ultra young. Like these guys, all these names, like you're going to see them again if they, they keep lifting, you know, yeah. uh, you know, that should, our, our Carpino should. score is not reflective of their talent. Yeah. And we should definitely just mention too, like, like these totals, these lifters here are going to be going up against the juniors that are competing at university nationals and the juniors that are going to university nationals, which are some of the best lifters in the world. I mean, like yeah. for instance, we know Anthony McNaughton in there at 105, you know, he, these, these lifters, uh, these young high school lifters have total like six ten. he's going to total like eight ten, you know, yeah. like at 105. Like, so, so there's probably going to be a lot of shakeups uh, yeah. once we take those uh, on the junior side of this. So make sure, you know, these, athletes have done a good enough job to put their name in the hat and put their name high in the running coming out of high school nationals. Well, we could see this team get a big overhaul when it comes to uh, ju once, once junior nationals is done in Scottsdale in June. Yeah. Just for instance, like on this junior classic team, you know, you're going to have Anthony McNaught you're going to have Shane, Nutt, you're going to have Zach Taylor all, all coming back to get their spot. Yeah. You know, exactly. and those, all three of those guys were competing last year for a world championship. Yeah, they were all right there as potential yeah. gold medalists, world champions, and they are all competitive in the open division as well. So it's like yeah, that's exactly tough lifters. Um, and then on the North American Championships team, go ahead on those. Uh, Hashim Kama Ludin, uh, Jacob Mann uh, in the 83s, Carter Wolf, 93, Brody Fulton, 105, Gary Lang and Paul Rutledge, and 120, Andrew Peters. All right. Awesome. So congrats to all those lifters for getting their names on this list, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's seven juniors all the way on the NAPF team. So that, you know, we had more juniors uh, so far, but, you know, like, like you said, this, the junior teams are going to be the ones that get shaken up the most with these next couple meets. Yeah, for sure. Um, just to mention a couple of lifters here, Sidor, he, he competed at classic open nationals um in a in a battle in an 83 class that was stacked and i think he ended up pulling trying to pull for the win or pull for a placing or something and miss um and that sarkis man he won best lifter and he's going to be a monster so i'm i'm excited to see as he like ages up into you know uh to get a little more competitive with his age it'll be exciting to see if he can go down and, and make it onto that napf team something like that and get start getting that international experience because him um, and Jessica, they both did awesome at, uh, yeah. at nationals. Yeah. I was writing the, the captions, um, for his weight class and I had to do a double take because I think he, he benched 172.5 kilos, which is 380. Um, yeah. so rare to see that in that weight class in high school. I mean, that's, that's a phenomenal lift. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're going to, you're going to see these names in the next the next few years you're going to keep seeing them yeah all right so uh, the equipped uh sub junior yep all right so these are your guys yeah a lot of my guys and this one's kind of unique in that it's uh it's every weight class you know okay so um nicholas caldonia in the 53s john silvera in the 59s jackson bice Bo perilu davon williamson Levi Cowart, Ario Senyalo, Kale McDaniel, and Kellen Myers. I mean, that's you know, it's a it's a good squad. Uh, yeah, that's a great squad. Look at those Carpinos. I mean, they're all yeah. their average Carpino is probably like two point three or something in there. It's like it's some stacked. That's a stacked team already. Yeah, that's a good team and spread out, which is always it's always good. You can have every weight class filled, you know, so you're gonna have you know, potentially every, every first place is going to be available to you as a, from a team perspective. That's awesome. And how many of those name off the ones that are your, your lifters. So my lifters is uh Nicholas Caldonia, John Silvera, Bo Perilu, Levi Cowart and Kellen Myers. Wow. 
So you got like half the team. <laughs> <laughs> Covington is a force. Yeah. Um, some great performances in there. Um, like I know Ario, did he finish in second? Yeah, so he finished in second to uh Chase Lawton, which he's on the on the next team. Yeah, you know, but he's he, you know, it he's phen- phenomenal lifter, you know. Uh you know, so um it, it's just crazy the dynamics of of picking these teams, you know, just from the different ages. Uh you know, you'll have sub juniors and juniors competing against each other at high school and the same thing at university at university nationals you'll 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 find you'll even still have some sub juniors there so yeah there's just it's just a you very unique dynamic and it's it's fun well i'm excited for Arillo because you know um I, he was going against the monster of chase lawton and so like it was a difficult battle he showed out though i mean look at that still a 2.3 carpino score i mean that's good that's very competitive yeah. And I didn't even realize, like, as it's unfolding, you just know that they're in the same weight class. They're both in varsity. They're going head to head. And, you you know, and in a Rio put on a show, a hell of a performance out there. Like, and the crowd was really behind him and stuff. And it's cool yeah. to see him show up on this list as like a first team selection for the U.S. national team going to the world championships in Romania. Yeah. So a pump for him. And of course, tons of great performances in there. Uh, Nicholas Caledonia, you know, 1.6 Carpino score. So he's yeah. gonna do damage, and that that's that wasn't a very good meet for him. You know, he uh, he kind of struggled uh, coming off a of state last week, uh, or I guess two weeks ago now, yeah. uh, and trying to you know just maintain his his weight. Uh, so he didn't have a great meet, but he you know he still did well enough to put himself in position to make the team. Yeah, for sure. All right, and let's talk about the North American Championships team. Yeah, Bryce Toops, who's he's also one of my lifters uh, in the 66, along with Brooks Bertram, uh, Thomas Weigel in the 74 with Jacob Felix, 93, Sean Elliott and Jeffrey Ding, uh, 105, Corey Schaefer and Francisco Lopez, and then 120 plus, we have Daniel Steele. Cool. So get, get right. some good experience for those guys in the Cayman Islands. Yeah, what a place. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah there, could, there could be worse places to have meets. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm so pumped to be there. All right. And let's uh, click on over to the juniors here. Okay. So, again, you know, high school nationals, not not many juniors, but uh, we've got a good squad still already. Uh, Dinesh Tamang in the 66, uh, 83, Nolan Walker and Tom Gardner, uh, 105, you know, led by Chase Lawton. Uh, Kyle Ullman's also there in the 120s, Karoo Wang. And then on the 105s, and for the NAPF team, we have Tucker Bryant. All right. So um, a lot of a lot of spots to fill still from, from uh, equipped nationals that will be in May and from university nationals, there'll be some equipped lifters there as well. Um, but definitely the performance that stands out if you're looking at those Carpino scores, 2.3 for Chase Lawton. The, the monster from Louisiana and uh, one of your guys, was he a sub junior last year? He was a sub junior. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So as his first year as a junior, he's already looking like he could podium at worlds as a junior, you know, an age group up. And I'm guessing he, pro- did he win best lifter last year or did he, what did he, uh, I know he, I think he got four gold medals or something like that. Yeah, he did. Uh, he actually, he lost best lifter. Uh to a Ukrainian, uh, I think it was maybe the Ukrainian 120, I think won it. Uh, his last, Chase's, I guess his second deadlift was to pull for best lifter, but he was just, he was gassed. He just, he just didn't have it. He, he ran out of gas and it was something he, he's been pulling that number forever. But mm-hmm. again, that's how, that's how meets go. You know, you just kind of never know when you're going to hit the wall. Uh, and just all the other factors that that play play a role in you know how quick how quick you get gassed yeah absolutely um he had he faced a little bit of adversity here at high school nationals because he only got one bench if i recall is that right yeah yeah just one bench uh he missed he missed his opening bench uh came back and got on a second and then uh his his third you know, just bench just wasn't right uh, that day. Uh, you know, and that's also kind of goes back to 
on an equipped lifting and just, you know, little, little variables can kind of play a big, a big role in, in mm -hmm. your final result. He still went six for six on the other lifts though, on squat and on deadlift, he got them all. And um, it looks like, I remember there was an issue, was it with his third squat where they had misloaded or something and he was like kind of standing around a little bit and had to wait a little bit longer than most of the Covington lifters, like I said before, like they get to the chalk bowl and you hear bar is loaded, they chalk their hands and they go and they don't have to wait around in their reps. But I think I think he had to wait around at least for one of his lifts on squat. I think was it? Yeah, I think I think it was. I think it was his third, maybe his second squat. Uh, but man, Chase Chase is a he's a phenomenal lifter. He's got got quite a bit of experience now. So you know that's that's kind of one of the big things I try to coach is just you know is handle adversity. You know because you, you never know how it's going to come. Like whether it's whether it's a misload whether it's, you know, somebody dumps the bar in front of you. I mean, there's just, there's so many different things that can come up, you know, that you, you try to prepare for, but you just can't like, so you just, you have to have that mentality of like, I'm just going to handle it, whatever it is. And he's, he's done phenomenal with that. Yeah. Yeah. He likes to be called juicy and he likes to be called the monster. <laughs> yeah, so you guys, he's <laughs> so I got to give him his props and his shout outs because you put on a show for the crowd out there um well, go ahead and you can um stop sharing your screen I don't know if I can do it from my end but um thank you so much for going through all that like we will go through and do some screenshots and stuff and get that information up onto the national teams page on the sub juniors juniors we'll make a post on Instagram where you make something that looks cool and format it right and all that kind of stuff um, but thank you so much for putting all that together um, because we definitely want to post out there, you know, the standings and kind of get a thing of like, hey, some of these junior lifters might get bumped off or might get might get bumped from the, the world's team to the NAPF team, things like yeah. this. Um, but while they're in that leaderboard, we like to kind of, you know, put their name out there and share the spotlight with them a little bit because they did. That means they had a great performance at high school nationals. Um, OK, so is there anything else you want to talk about with regards to the national teams, worlds in Romania or, or the NAPF team going to Cayman Islands? You know, so the the I guess the the biggest thing I want to re reiterate is just you know these teams are going to change, uh, you know, and probably change quite a bit. Uh, you know, it's it's incredible just to be kind of on this list already. You know, so congratulations to all those. Uh, but just just understand the list is going to change. Nothing is final until basically January fifth, or you know, after the meet on January fourth, June June fourth, uh, yeah. And, you know, for a lot of this, uh, a lot of these lifters at this age, uh, you know, one thing I want to mention is that like these trips are self-funded, you know, so, you know, start trying to plan for that, you know, because these are great experiences, but unfortunately they're also relatively expensive to, to go to. But I mean, I think, I think anybody would tell you it's well worth it, but, you know, start planning now so that money isn't the hold up you know you know figure out how you're gonna come up with the plane ticket and uh you know the team fees and just the other stuff that goes with it you know uh, get your passport you know yeah. it's, it's a lot of that stuff uh is a lot of times it's, it's what prevents people from accepting a spot like because they just they can't come up with the money quick enough you know yeah. uh all these teams uh are on pretty tight deadlines with with uh you know turning in names to the ipf and stuff like that so it's it's when you get these emails like there's not much time so the more you can plan and prepare for uh the financial obligations the better off you're going to be and hopefully you know you put yourself to where you know you can accept a spot if you're offered yeah and i, I think there's even a thing with wada the adel um thing that takes some time julia i think you're going through it right now right and um that's something that has to be done as well. And it takes days to do that. So yeah. like, if, if you think about, if you if your name has been mentioned on this podcast, you should probably go ahead and get that done and uh, knock it out because there's a good chance you might be making it onto one of these teams. Julia, do you want to speak on it? Yeah. So um, I actually have to get it done by tomorrow because um, they put me on an alternate spot for the world's team. I don't, you know, think um, I'm necessarily going to be on the world's team, but just in case. Um, 
And they said in the email it can take up to eight hours. Um, I don't think it, it will take that long, but it, it's definitely, you know, a three or four hour thing. I got about halfway through it in, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. So, yeah. yeah. So a lot of things. So make sure you read those emails that John is taking time to write out for you guys and uh, do everything that's in it. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about that? And then I just want to talk briefly a little bit more about high school nationals and some of the performances we saw. I'm good as far as that stuff goes. All right. All right. So <clears throat> just so quickly, like I want to run down some names here real quick of the like I'll go down to like, let's say the 10th place based on good lift points. So once again, in the link in the description on YouTube and on podcast, there will be a link to where you can go and donate and become a patron of open powerlifting um, and open IPF, which we rely upon for like all these podcasts. So if you go over to uh, open IPF and you search for one of these lifters like Eleni Guerrera and you click on it and then you click through to AMP high school nationals, which AMP is the, sh the acronym for powerlifting America. PA was already taken by powerlifting Australia. So that's why we had to come up with something different. Um, you can click through and you can see the rankings. So I just sorted it by IPF good lift points. And I just want to mention a handful of these because we had some really great performances. Eleni Guerrera was a number one based off of IPF points. Um, with a 90, she just barely edged out Sarkis, who those were the rear one and two best lifters on the classic side. Marcus McFadden was right there as well. Um, that's our guy on the media team. You, you remember him from the classic nationals recap shows. He makes reels for us. He writes captions for us. He does a lot of work. He showed out, put up a 90.47, which I believe Sarkis, his coach, explicitly went and, and chipped that and, and uh, took best lifter from Marcus. One of the benefits of being in a heavier weight class um, and then we had Chelsea Enamore, and I, she comes in at number four. I want to circle back to her and talk about her performance in just a second. Number five was Chase Lawton, um, the only equipped guy, uh, only equipped lifter cracking into the top 10 here on good lift points. And I don't know if that's some kind of bias with good lift points that maybe it has some kind of bias against uh, equipped lifting. But number six was Keegan Bucci, seven, James Kellerman, the, the, also put on a great performance. And then number eight, Jessica Haggerty broke the squat national record, then opened with a bench national record and broke it two more times. Um, total total national record as well that she broke. Uh, Trevor Klein, we saw him on the last day just putting on a show uh, for everyone. He's an extremely young lifter, like 16, and he's one of the throwers. He's on the throwing team on track. So we start getting some of these lifter, some of these athletes coming over um, from more mainstream sports. And you see this guy is going to be a huge problem coming going forward. He's got a great coach too. And then uh, Salvatore Capria um, there as the 10th best uh, going off of good lift points. So good mix in there of some women, uh, mostly men is like good lift points. Maybe there's a bias towards men and towards uh, classic, um, but still generally that's like your top 10 coming out of high school nationals as far as how they'll be ranked um, going on to how they'll be selected onto this national team because good lift points is part of the selection criteria but it is broken down based on age group and by equipment class and things like that. But of those performances, um, one of the ones I just want to mention, Eleni, you know, she got her third deadlift. She, she had a uh, back injury coming into this meet and just like, you go, go follow her on Instagram. You can read about it and see the story is she was extremely happy to pull what she pulled. I think she got a PR in the, in the end on her deadlift. But the one I wanted to talk about that gave us all heart attacks and John and I were in the warm up room uh, <laughs> and we're just like, what are we going to do um, was, was Chelsea Enamore. And so John, if you want to uh, kind of just kind of give a little bit of like the drama that unfolded with Chelsea's performance. Man, she was, she was phenomenal. Like just the whole day, just kind of cruising, you know, uh, just kind of set the tone from the start with her squats. Uh, you know, she had a, I think it was like, a, I think 446, you know, uh, on squat. And then, yeah. you know, just running away with the class. And she gets to her open and deadlift and uh, conventional puller. She, she moves it about three inches and it doesn't budge after that. So, like, you know, we were talking amongst ourselves, like, man, like, holy shit, like, what, yeah. what's, what's about to happen? And man, that, that girl, like, she, I don't know. She went to another place and she pulled it on a second. And man, it was like, that was a really cool moment to see, to see somebody go from not budging a deadlift to, you know, taking everything she's got, 
pulling out on her second attempt. Uh, she was feeling it in her back, you know, kind of going into deadlifts, and uh, she ended up scratching on her third because of it. But yeah. it was it was awesome to see her get that second attempt and uh, you know take take kind of what she rightfully earned, you know, first place. I mean, that was, just, that was a cool moment. Yeah. So like for, you know, people that may not know, it's like, she, she was, she was cruising. She was six for six. Uh, she missed her third deadlift or her third bench on a technicality that her head came off, um, which is something she's got to get cleaned up because her head also came up on her second uh, attempt as well. And they didn't catch it, but um, that's something she got to clean up. But I mean, it just moved like air. Like she blew up her third bench. Um, her squats all looked easy. She's cruising to a big total. And she's going six for six. I mean, basically, like I said, she'd miss on a technicality on her third bench. And I mean, John and I, like John as a national team head coach and me, just as the social media guy, my eyes are like, every time I, I see her, I'm just like, my eyes are lighting up. Like we got one here. Like, this is going to be a star. Like she's going to be a star athlete. She's going to go get us a gold medal and stuff like this. Um, and of course we know we got Luella Bowden sitting right there as well, but when then she came out and and just didn't budge that th that deadlift conventional which there's not a technical thing you know, like it was a it was a strength thing it was like our hearts just sank like she could actually end up not getting a total and then not making the team based on this and of course there's a second chance it's the cool thing about if you go to high school nationals is that you got a second chance you can come to sub junior nationals in Scottsdale in June and still make the team that way. But yeah, it was just like a, like a big, like heart attack moment for everyone. And then um, I was telling John, like, Hey, there's, she, you got to go help her in some way, somehow she didn't have a, she had her sister there with her. So this is one of the lessons I think um, from to take away from this was that she, she didn't have a game day coach that was really familiar with power. Her coach wasn't there. And so that was one of those things where when you're cruising, and you're having a great day like this, could have been very easy if you had uh, John in your corner calling your numbers and things like that. He knows you got a back injury, something like this. He sees how deadlifts are warm ups are going. You're moving around a little slow. Drop that opener, you know, put something easy on the bar because all you need is a total because um, you already had done so much on squat and bench that there's a good chance you're going to make this sub junior worlds team. Um, so, yeah, John, what other like tips and takeaways you have like from that? Well, you know, I think you said it, you know, uh, just having having some good people in your corner, uh, you know, and, you know, her sister was a big supporter of her. And uh, but, you know, just having just having some experience there and, you know, with these kind of meets with uh, where uh, a you're kind of emotionally invested. There's a lot of intensity to your lifts, which, you know, you don't really get in training all the time. So over the course of the day, when you have that many uh, kind of emotionally taxing lifts, it adds up. And when you get to deadlift, like you, you kind of never know when you're going to hit that wall. You know, you're hoping, hey, I hope I get all three of my deadlifts in before I just run out. But sometimes it it's going to be, you know, before your third, before your second, and uh, sometimes before your first. But hopefully, if you got some somebody that's experienced there they can see hey your deadlifts aren't moving like they should let's let's just be a little bit safe and let's let's bump it down a little bit let's just get into meat hey then we'll then we'll then we'll start playing the game on our second and third but let's let's make sure we get into meat again absolutely Mike. what did you say to her well i just you know i, I was just trying to motivate her a little bit uh just kind of reminded her to kind of hey focus on your technique because you know deadlift you know it's it's such a uh emotional lift that you can kind of you can really lose your technique i said i said look just get pumped up but don't forget that technique and uh you know she didn't she didn't need much she she was i mean she was awesome you know she just uh i think she got on the phone right after her her opener she got on the phone with uh i think it was her coach i'm assuming it was her coach uh and you know she she didn't need me to tell her anything you know uh but she she just gritted it out man it was it was awesome yeah yeah i was hearing you say and stuff like locking your back and um talking technique cues and just just being encouraging you know because that's 
it can be embarrassing, especially in this age group, like they're maybe a little more self-conscious than some of the open age division and masters and stuff. Um, you're, you're cruising, everyone's cheering for you. Everyone's basically congratulating you before the meet is even over. And um, to miss that opening deadlift, you know, it's like kind of go back with your tail between your legs a little bit. And so just having someone come over and be encouraging, I think was was probably helpful for her as well. But you're right, she's, she's a stud. She doesn't need much help or anything. But I, I do want to just tell you that when I told her that, that that was the U.S. national team head coach giving her those words of encouragement before she went out there, she was like really blown away. Um, she It really made her day and it was special for her. So So hats off to you for doing that. And for people in powerlifting, I mean, this happens all the time, like where, you know, there's someone out there, you see they have talent and then, but they have no game day coach. Just go up to someone in the warm-up room. They'll help you. They'll point you in the right way of, Hey, Oh, here's a guy who can uh, put in your attempts for you. He doesn't have anyone in this, in this flight or in the same flight as you or whatever. Um, we love to help everyone out because we want to see everyone be successful. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, the other thing I want to mention was just, if we go and look at these lifters, like I said, we're clicking through and we look, especially those top three all finished with a 90 point something, 90.4, 90.8, 90.87 on good lift points. Those are three really great standout performances. And if we lo just look at their attempts, they all went nine for nine. Yeah. Um, all three of those lifters made attempts. They all probably had a little something left in the tank, but still, you know, showed out and had a great, great day tonight for nine. Like Marcus, you know, we can know he's got a great coach. He had a great team handling him. Sarkis, same thing. And Eleni, also the same thing. So like we, she had uh, JJ handling her and calling her numbers and her coach was also there. Um, Marcus had a whole team. He had uh, Jim and Janelle Brown with him and they brought another guy with him to help because Jim has a tricep uh, tear off the bone. Um, so he had like a whole squad of people <laughs> for, for a raw lifter. That was a lot. Yeah. Um, and then Sarkis, you know, he had Jessica and his coach there as well. So, I mean, it just goes to show, like, make sure when you're going to these national meets and things that you bring your squad with you, you got the right people behind you, um, go try to go nine for nine. You'll see it's no coincidence that the three top good lift points here all went nine for nine. Um, so it's like you make attempts, use consistency as a weapon. Um, and that's what those lifters did. And was there anyone else that you wanted to uh, give a shout out to um, from this list? Well, the one thing, man, Elaney, uh, you know, she's a sub junior, but she's also got another year of sub juniors next year. And she's already, I, I think she's, uh, her total, if I'm not mistaken, is 17 keys off the world record. So oh, wow. like, and like you were saying, like she, she wasn't sure what she was going to pull just dealing with some, uh, some, some injuries and stuff in training, you know? So Man, that's that's super exciting, you know, to see what she's gonna do with, with another uh three months of training before four worlds. I mean that's absolutely and then that another world record year. Site, you know. Yeah, and then another year even beyond that. Yeah. Um, so no, that's that's super exciting. Um yeah, she was a um just a, a nice per a great person to be around. You could just feel the positivity and see hanging out with her in the warm-up room. She's she's uh I mean, we're gonna be stacked in the 57s for years to come, it seems like now. Yeah for sure with Natalie Richards there already. And then now with her coming up. So, um, and then, yeah, I mean, Jessica Haggerty was the other one, like I said, national records and uh, 52, that's a weight class that at the classic, at the open level, we need a 52 to come up through the ranks. Um, yeah. So right now we've got Jamie Fisher is there. We got Megan Hurlbert, but you know, Megan didn't make weight. So it will be good to see some more depth in some of those classes, like 52, 57. So that's cool to see that two of the highest ranking women were in those weight classes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, I would say, well, Amy, like these numbers are very good for an open lifter, you know, in, in a non-age group class. So, I mean, that's that's phenomenal lifting there. Absolutely. And, they, and like John was saying, to consider that she's got another year as a sub junior after this. Um, she's one that we can be looking at as a best possible best lifter at sub junior worlds at some point and definitely a someone who's a threat to, to bring home a lot of gold medals for team USA. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if there's no one else in here, we want to give shout outs to then, uh, you know, I think we did a good job kind of hitting, you know, mentioning a lot of names and uh, giving these, these young student athletes, some shine, putting them in the spotlight a little bit, because I don't know about you, John, but like, <clears throat> and even, and even Julia, like uh, remotely, 
writing all the captions and stuff um, for social media last week, I was extremely inspired by these lifters. I mean, like they put up numbers. Like I was not expecting to see this much talent and the, even the depth of talent that we had at high school nationals. I guess maybe one thing, if, if there's no, no other lifters want to mention is to John, just kind of give your overall takeaway on high school nationals as, as an event, as a competition and where we are in year one of high school nationals. Man, I, I thought Steve did a, did a great job. The, uh, the media team uh, did a great job that, you know, all, everybody loves that, you know, it's, it's a, social media day and age and uh y'all do a tremendous job you know especially man I, i'm amazed at how quick y'all get that stuff out like that's like i i just i'm not a social media guy like it always i wish i was better at it you know being the head coach of the the subs and juniors but i'm just it always kind of seems to take a back seat but man y'all do a phenomenal job just the the quality and just the speed like it i'm amazed like i don't know how y'all do it but uh, overall, man, Steve, Steve did a great job. The judging was great. The venue was great. And, you know, that's, what's great about high school nationals. Cause like you never, this age, like it's still like, you don't necessarily know kind of, you don't know people yet necessarily. Yeah. Some of them you do, you know, obviously everybody knew Chase, you know, yeah. a lot of people know Lola, yeah. uh, but there's a lot of people you don't know. So it, it's super exciting to see like, just these like incredibly talented young kids come up and like, you can just tell, man, like these kids are going to be stars, you know? So it's, it, it's just really freaking cool. Yeah, it, it really was uh, it's very inspiring. And like I said, I mean, we're coming off of Sheffield, like Julie and I are covering, you know, staying up all night and stuff, working on Sheffield stuff. And then going into this meet, you're thinking, oh, this is going to be high school, like JV day, like we're, what are we even getting into here? And then you show up and these kids are like raring to go. They're putting up huge numbers. Like they're like little superstars out there, you know, and it's just like, it was just, it's like, here we are. I mean, like these are the young, like Amanda Lawrence's and Taylor Atwood's and Jesus Oliveras's of the world. They're right here and they're coming up, you know? So, oh, yeah. And then um, as far as the meet too, I mean, I think we had like 240 lifters, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, for, for year one, I think this meet didn't even get on the calendar until like something like September or something. I remember it was definitely in the fall. Maybe it was August or something. Um, and I know Steve put in a ton of legwork to go out there and like, you know, uh, go show up at high school meets, have meetings with high school coaches, things like this. So I think the future is really bright for, for high school nationals. I think it was, it sur surpassed everyone's expectations as far as I'm, con as far as I saw at yeah. least. Yeah, it was it was great. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, the high school uh, high school power thing is just it's a different animal from, you know, even collegiate power thing. And then, you know, even uh, open power thing. It's just high school is just it's a different beast, you know, uh, but Steve did a great job communicating and trying to in power thing America. That's kind of been their their. Uh, you know, the I guess what I've been proud of is they're, they're trying to keep it for the lifter and kind of trying to do what's best for everybody. Now everybody's got, you know, no organization is without fault, but yeah. Pilots in America is doing a good job communicating and trying to really just do what's best for the lifter, for the sport and, you know, how to kind of marry those two, you know, put out the best product they can. And I'm super excited about high school nationals next year. Uh, and kind of just seeing seeing where this thing goes and getting more more and more talent on the on the on the world teams and more talent just to the meets you know just yeah. make it super competitive you know yeah yeah I know um and as far as team points were concerned and, and stuff last year at junior worlds I think we got a couple gold medals on team points half of them or something roughly uh, if if I if I can recall at the top of my head it was good um, but definitely like we want to sweep them, right? Like we want all of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you see these, these high school kids, I mean, that's why, like I was saying, like your eyes get so big when you see someone like Chelsea just cruising and putting up these big numbers or like Trevor coming from shot put, you know, it's like, we got one, like we got another one, you know, yeah. um, in these, in these classes, that's, we get so excited about it. And uh, yeah, we're not going to be satisfied until team USA takes home all four of those gold medals on the team points yep. or 
eight of them i get right yeah yeah i don't know how many is it, is it? yeah yeah and you know there's no reason we shouldn't man like we just got oh man we got so much talent like yeah yeah i, I don't i don't see how anybody could beat us but yeah but it's just a matter of getting them all over to PA, uh, get them all over to the IPF route, you know, and then and then actually getting them all to Worlds too, because it's it is yeah. difficult. And that was one thing when you were talking before is like if you see your name on this list and you're a reserve, you're the third or fourth reserve for for going to Romania on the Worlds team, um, don't be dismayed because there's a good chance that three or four there's there's always going to be someone that's kind of dropping out or doesn't accept for one reason or another. And yeah. so you know, don't be don't get your heart broken right away. Um, because you never know what could, could happen um, and uh, on those reserves and things like that. So especially with this age group, like the classic open team, those 16 lifters, they're not going to, they're not going to probably end up backing out. But at this age group, there's always something that comes up. They got other sports that they're doing. Like we're talking Trevor's on the track team shot put, um, you know, there's always other things going on with this age group. Yeah. A lot of times we, you know, the, on the, on the men's side, you get uh football players and, you know, Worlds is last weekend in August, so that's like right yeah. when the season's starting for everybody. So like, you know, a lot of them don't want to miss that, you know. And I get it, but uh, so you know, they might not accept a spot for that. And then you know, you always have people um, that that get injured, unfortunately, and they'll have to back out for that reason. So even those alternates, man, if they can kind of just be ready, be ready at the drop of a hat to accept, you know, that's 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 big. Yep. For sure. All right, John. Well, we take up a lot of your time here on a Saturday, Easter Saturday. Um, and That's Julia, good. you as well. Um, it was it was super great talking with you. I hope that everyone gets a little bit more of a perspective of of how big this team is. And also just think about all of our national teams. Like this one is 72 lifters. Oh, coordinating that, getting just doing getting the track suits and everything for 72 lifters is a big job. It's a lot that goes into this kind of stuff. You know, the, the uh, Masters Worlds and NAPF team is also huge, the equipped teams. So uh, the NAPF team as a whole could end up being like 150 or something lifters going down to the Cayman Islands. So it's a lot. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that these head coaches, you know, it's not just all fun and games on game day where they get to do, where they get to go out there and have fun and call numbers and adjust shirts and do things that are fun and exciting. There's a lot of back-end work that goes into this, as you see in that immaculate spreadsheet that John's already got going. So definitely when you see these these coaches out there, make sure you, you tip your hat to them and say thank you for everything that they've done for us and everything that they're continuing to do um, in powerlifting and in powerlifting America. So, all right. Well, John, any final words? I appreciate it. If anybody's got any any questions uh, about the sub-junior and junior programs, you know, I'd, I'd love to get them answered for you and uh, help you kind of achieve your goals in the future. So uh, please reach out. My email is on the, on the website under the Subden Juniors national team page. All right. And also you are the man behind the U.S. Subs and Juniors Instagram account. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. Yeah. 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 We'll, don't, we'll give you some tips and stuff, but don't worry. We got you back yeah. with the Power Team America account. You don't yeah. have to. You just worry about wrapping knees and, and uh, calling attempts and stuff. We'll do the social media. But also, um, if you are in this age group, make sure you're following that account. Um, they'll give information out over there. Um, you can DM that account and stuff like that and get through to John because I know a lot of these kids, like they don't even use email anymore. They just use Instagram DMs and stuff. So we try to have like a couple of ways to get a hold of people. So yeah. and um, you can always also DM powerlifting underscore America on Instagram and we'll try to be the operator and get you to the right person that you're looking for as well. Yeah. So, and I, I would like to mention, uh, you know, obviously with potentially 72 kids, uh, you know, most of the communication will be done by email just because with that many people, that's really just the best way to keep it organized for me and to kind of get in touch with everybody, uh, kind of all at once. So, you know, even if you don't like it, uh, try to get better at it. You know, like, like I'm going to do with, with uh, social media. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't rely on DMs. Don't rely on that. But yeah. definitely there'll be information coming from that account. And stuff, so make sure you're following it, especially yeah. if you're in this age group or if you're just a fan of the sport and want to see the young superstars coming up, make sure you're following that account. Um, uh, Julia, you have any final words? Any last thing? Um, not really. Just um, if you're a high school athlete um, watching this and you want to get into this this sport, um, there's a lot of opportunities, you know, even as you go up the age classes, um, you know, from from 
sub juniors all the way to masters, you have the opportunity to go to all these places and meet all these people you've never seen before. And um, it can be a life changing, you know, thing. So um, definitely get involved if you're interested and um, hit up the account. And, uh, you know, we'd love to see you compete. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a good thing. This sport is unique in that it's kind of very easy to kind of, I don't want to say easy, but there's kind of a cut and dry process to, to go, you know, local state nationals and then all the way to worlds. Whereas a lot of sports don't have that, you know, uh, you know, much less for, for this age group. So it's, it's really cool. And then international meets, man, you know, there's nothing like competing with the USA across your chest. And then, you know, with all these other countries, you know, IPF, you know, they have such a, uh, a wide breadth uh, of continents that, that go to these meets. Like, you know, you go and compete against Germany and, you know, you can't even communicate with them, which is, is kind of, it's unique, but it's, it's awesome. And you just kind of figure out how to communicate and you develop these bonds with, with the people you compete against. I mean, it's, there's no experience like it. It's, it's, it's awesome. I highly recommend everybody, you know, shoot, make this your goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you get the opportunity, don't say no, you know, take advantage of it. So, all right, you guys, well, with that, I think we'll call it a wraps today for the power of teen America podcast. Thanks for everyone for coming in and listening. And thank you, John and Julia for joining us. Thank you all so much for having me. All right. Peace out. Later.